So in order to do this, I need a high voltage with a pretty significant current as well, like this high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first what I need to do is fill these two beakers with DI water. Now I have here these two beakers of deionized water in them. You can see that the surface of the water is well below the top rim of the beaker. Now if I charge these beakers to a really high voltage, around 20 to 30 kilovolts, then something unexpected happens. The water suddenly climbs the edges of the beaker and goes into the other beaker. But watch what happens when I turn on a high voltage now. And not only that, once the water connection is formed, then I can separate the two beakers and the water bridge actually stays stable and connects the two beakers. It flows up and around the rim across to the other one. This is amazing and completely unexpected from what we normally see happen with electricity and water. Whoa. Uh, it's a lot of water flowing. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I actually think that I had <laughs> my current too high on that. It was making too much water flow, so it made the bridge too heavy. Let's try that again. Okay, voltage on. Here we go. Drain a little bit of water. You can see that I can get the water bridge to hang in midair as far as almost an inch long. Whoa. Look how cool this is. There's a stable zone that forms the best bridges. If you have your current too high, then the bridge gets too big and heavy and it sags down and it drips water out and drains the beakers. And then if it gets too thin, then the surface tension just takes over Whoa. and the bridge collapses. Also, if you have too many ions in the water, then the bridges don't form very well at all. And also the water even heats up and boils inside the bridge. You can see the boiling water like this. Now, not only does the water bridge form, but there's actually a transfer of water that happens. You can see if I put particles in the water that it actually moves across the bridge, but not just in one direction. You can see that it goes back and forth. And not only that, I can actually get a small bead of styrofoam to actually float in the water bridge right in the center. It's floating in a complete bridge of water. Look at that. It's actually floating on a real water bridge. That is crazy. So why doesn't the water bridge just collapse? Well, normally the surface tension of water wants to break the bridge to form spherical droplets, but the electric field energy is actually lowest when the water is in a cylindrical shape. So it's actually more energetically stable to form a cylinder than to break the bridge. So it forms a stable water bridge when you have these high voltages. But another thing weird happens that's less understood. Why does water transfer from one beaker to the next? And before we continue, I'm so excited because I was just informed in my email that I want a new shot vac. That's weird, I thought it was shop vac. Oh well, let's just click this link to get my prize. But no, I'm blocked by Guardio. Luckily, Guardio saved me from not getting a shot vac and they also sponsored this video. Guardio is a browser extension that's specifically designed to keep you safe while browsing the internet. Hackers do a great job in disguising their phishing sites to look legitimate, but Guardio does a better job at unveiling these malicious websites. Unlike other products which rely solely on blacklists, Guardio's security team develop in-house features to increase the detection of phishing and other malicious sites. Some scams are so sophisticated that even two-factor authentication doesn't help in preventing them, like what happened to Linus and a lot more YouTube channels recently. Guardio's team researched this specific scam a few months ago, and they have in-house developed features that detect and block such malware. Guardio also removes intrusive and invasive notifications and pop-ups. It traces the source and eliminates the invasive notifications all at once. 
Once you install it, it'll scan your browser for existing threats. And this scan is completely free. I'm sure that you'll be surprised with what it finds. And from there, you can continue to a seven day trial to remove these threats and enable real time protection. Guardio also shows you past data leaks and can alert you in real time whenever there's a new data leak with a service you have an account with so that you can take action quickly and prevent identity theft. One Guardio account covers five family members at no extra cost, so you can share it with your parents, grandparents, siblings, or friends and make sure that they are safe as well. Get Guardio now and protect your online browsing and information, avoid installing malware and falling victim to scams, and get real-time alerts when your information could be at risk. Go to guard.io slash action lab to get 20% off and check out their affordable premium plan for full protection as well. Now let's get back to our experiment. We saw that water can go back and forth between the beakers, but also overall there's a large mass transfer that moves from positive to the negative. And not just a little transfer, but a lot. You can get about 10 grams of mass to transfer from one beaker to the other. What's really cool is that I noticed that this bulk movement of water from one beaker to the other can be instigated by moving a charged balloon above the water bridge. As soon as I move the balloon over the water, you can see it empties one beaker and fills the other. Every time I move it closer, it does it a little more. For some reason, this electrostatic charge is causing bulk water flow from one beaker to the next. This could possibly be an interaction with charged nanobubbles or some other interaction that I'm not sure of. And also, one of the beakers gets significantly hotter than the other as well. As far as just high voltages are concerned, we shouldn't expect any of this to happen. So why is it happening? Well, there's a lot of different theories from quantum mechanical effects to nanobubble formation. The one that I lean towards is the nanobubble formation. One reason that I lean towards this is because researchers have shown that the water bridge shows that the bulk density in the bridge is actually lower inside the bridge than outside. You can show this using Schlieren imaging and you can see the density movements go through the bridge. One way that this can happen is if there's actually nanobubbles being transported. So the overall density of the water is lower due to this gaseous phase. These nanobubbles can be formed due to the high electrostatic forces that can rip the water apart to form cavitated bubbles of gaseous water. These bubbles are charged and can move from one electrode to the other. So basically the little nanobubbles drag water along with it. In addition to this, there's also a lot of other strange phenomenon in the water bridge that aren't well understood either. What's crazy is this phenomenon was actually discovered in 1893, but then forgotten and rediscovered in 2007. So we still have a lot to learn about what's actually going on here. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.